Hi everybody, it's Gemma. Welcome back to Pampered Wolf. This video was going to be a full face of Black Friday deals today, but they keep changing the Black Friday deals on me as it's not Friday yet. So, um, you know, I guess they're allowed, but uh, it was slightly inconvenient. So I've taken the Black Friday element out of this get ready with me today. We're just gonna do a really glamorous look today, but it will be able to be transported from day to night. It won't be like super glam like I usually do at this time of year with a bright red lip. Not gonna do that today. It's gonna be slightly more muted, elegant, classy, but still glamorous. I'm not making any sense whatsoever, so I'm just gonna get on with it. Stay tuned for Black Friday deals on Friday though. I am going to film on Friday, edit on Friday, and try and get it out for you as soon as possible with my top pick for the best Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So do keep a lookout for my video on Friday if you're wanting to get your hands on some really good deals. So let's get started. If you are new here, hi, nice to meet you. My name's Gemma. I upload videos two to three times a week here on YouTube, and I'm also on Instagram if you fancy checking me out over there. It's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I would really appreciate it if by the end of this video you like what you see, you hit that like button and you come and join the Pampered Wolf Pack by hitting that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. So I'm gonna do things in a slightly arse about tit way. Can I say that on here? Well, I just did. So um, I'm gonna do my color corrector first and then move on to eyeshadow second, which, you know, a lot of people won't understand, but I want to let my color corrector dry down so that everything I put on top of it doesn't crease. And I just find that that is the best way of doing it. I'm not gonna go into masses of detail about my concealer routine because the video that came out just before this one was all about my brand new concealer routine. So if you're interested in watching a more in-depth tutorial on my brand new under eye concealer routine for anybody over the age of 35 who has any fine lines and wrinkles whatsoever, then um, I will link that video up here for you to watch. So once I've popped that on and I've just popped it on the areas of darkness, I'm gonna move on to my eyeshadow and give that chance to dry down. So I've got a bit of my P. Louise base. This is my favorite because it gives coverage as well as leaving an absolutely fantastic oil-free base for all of your other products to sit on top of haven't actually found one that I prefer more than this yet. <laughs> so I just want to take this opportunity to wish all of my American subscribers a really happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow. I hope you have the most amazing day and it's full of love and laughter. If you're watching this any later than Thursday, I'm really sorry this makes no sense to you, but this video should go live on Wednesday evening, the day before Thanksgiving. So if you're watching that on Wednesday evening, happy Thanksgiving for tomorrow. I hope it's an amazing day. So the palette I'm gonna be using today is the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize from Charlotte Tilbury. I had to check the name of that then. I always forget the names of these palettes. <laughs> This is a lovely, lovely palette. I'm gonna go into the purpley pinky tones today. I just think they are just glorious. But before I go into those, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a transition shade with this shade here, just in the crease and slightly above the crease. So I'm gonna take my Refer 16 brush, which is a really beautiful, combed fluffy brush and I'm just gonna pat that on the outer corner and go in circular motions on the outer edge. So once that's done and it's a really nice blend I am going to start with the pinky purpley tones. And I'm gonna go in with my finger for this. I'm gonna go straight into the deepest shade and you may find that that is a little bit of a weird way of doing things, but I'm just gonna place the darkest shade just on the outer edge. And then I'm gonna blend that in with the paler shades in just a moment. 
So once that's on the lid, I'm gonna take the same brush that we used with the transition shade and just feather that into the crease. You'll have noticed that I didn't touch this area here. It's still quite a, a, a line on the skin that's not blended at all. I'm now going to take this shade here, which is a really beautiful, iridescent, browny, pinky, purpley shade. It's got flecks of goldy pink in there as well. It's just beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna pop it in the middle and just blend those two together. As you can see, there are no line left. It's just blended now. And I'm gonna take that all the way to about there. So I'm not gonna go right into the corner with the shade. And then I'm gonna get a flat brush. This is the Refa 02 brush. And I'm just going to pop that in this shade here, which is the palest of the trio Dream Glow. And then pop that from the inner corner and then blend that into the other shade. So just to give it a little bit more dimension, I'm going to take this shade here and this shade here from the trio Love Glow and just place that in the center of the lid just for a bit of added sparkle and it is just a tiny amount right in the center and you see how that really opens up the eye wakes everything up and you just get that slight little shimmer i'm going to take my essential eye cold pencil from wayne goss in rich hazel which is just beautiful and i'm going to push it in this top lash line into the lashes. I am absolutely in love with this pencil and also the shade Rich Hazel. It's not as harsh as using a jet black. It's just a little softer. So it's very, very flattering. So I'm just gonna go on and tight line the upper waterline and also the lower. Now, if you have sensitive eyes, I always recommend looking down into a mirror. That way your pupil is all the way down here and where you're actually drawing is further up. So you're not going to poke yourself in the eye because, you know, that's not pleasant. So I've got zero fallout on my cheeks, so I don't have to clean that up, but I still prefer to always do my eyeshadow before foundation and concealer and the rest of my makeup, because if you do get yourself into a little bit of a mess, it's far easier to clean up bare skin than have the added pressure of cleaning a mess over the top of foundation, concealer, blush and everything. Nobody needs that. So I always prefer to do it this way round. And I know a lot of people have asked me why I do my eyeshadow before everything else. That is the reason, but I haven't had a problem with this palette. Usually it's not a fallout issue for me. I am a very clumsy person. It's usually user error. I'll just draw down my face or something and end up having to clean myself up just one of the things of being a clumsy person. Let's move on to foundation. This is my favorite foundation. I love it. It's just so super flattering on the skin. My mum looks glorious in this as well, but it is rather pricey. But watch this space. There will be some Black Friday deals for Shantikai. In fact, I think at the Shantikai website at the moment has 20% off site-wide. So if you're thinking about purchasing this, I would definitely go and check out the Black Friday deals. This is the Shantikai Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. It is so lightweight, it is so flattering, and it was just all around beautiful, all around beautiful. Now my mum has one of these in the shade Vanilla, I think, Vanilla. I have the shade Porcelain, which is a better match for me. My mum is extremely lucky that I purchased the wrong shade at the beginning and she can easily get away with that shade whereas I can't. So she inherited my mistake which was great for her and sucked for me. <laughs> so I'm only going to apply the tiniest bit because you don't need a lot of this. And it spreads so so beautifully. 
it feels really cooling on the skin. Oh, I love everything about this foundation. Absolutely everything. Now, the reason I love this foundation so much is because it looks so natural. It really does look like skin and that was another reason that my mum loved it as well. But the drawback to having this look completely like skin and having the skin poke through is that if you have anything that needs covering over, you will need to use a concealer. This foundation will not cover that over. So I do have a little blemish here that might need covering over, although, you know, I'm not bothered about that sort of thing. And there's a little bit of discoloration because of a blemish here, which also isn't covered over. So if you want that perfect, flawless skin, this probably isn't gonna give you that, but it's definitely gonna even everything out and it's gonna look super natural on the skin. It's not gonna look like you've got masses of foundation on and you've made too much of an effort, if you get what I mean. So I'm gonna move on to concealer. Do this rather quickly, because like I said at the beginning of this video, the last video I did was all about my new concealer routine. So I'm not going to go into it in masses of detail. I'm gonna speed through this. If you want to see this in more detail, check out that video. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into the eyeshadow palette and really sort out that lower lash line. I'm gonna take a really thin brush, which is my Refa 13 brush, and I'm gonna go into the middle shade that we used and really get that close to the lash line. So I'm gonna move on to brows now. I'm not gonna do my mascara, which again is a little bit of a weird way of doing it, but it's just how I prefer. I don't like getting my hand caught in the mascara and then the mascara goes everywhere. So I prefer to do my eyebrows before I touch my eyelashes. So I'm just gonna brush through my brows and then I am going to roughly outline where I want my brows to sit. Then I'm gonna take my favorite brow setter, which is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This is just phenomenal stuff. And uh, it has a couple of sized combs. So there's one that's quite a lengthy comb, very flexible, and then there's a shorter comb, which is more precise. So I guess it all depends on how much of the product you want on your brows. The shorter, little hairs get less product on, the longer hairs get more product on. So I always like to go in with the longer side first and then do any touch-ups with the shorter side. And the reason I like this product so much is it doesn't stick the brows to the skin. And I find that a lot of brow setters stick the, your brow hairs to your skin, which makes them look really good from a distance, but when you get up close, they just don't look natural. These ones will hold the hairs without actually flattening anything, so they still can look really full and quite bushy. So let's move on to mascara. My lashes don't hold a curl really well, regardless of how long I've had my eyelash curler clamped to my eyelashes. But uh, I am thinking this weekend that I might um, do a bit of a lash lift because my lashes are quite flat now. I did a lash lift over the summer. They were amazing. So many people commented, if you want me to film that process, do let me know. I'm always a little bit hesitant to film procedures like that because it's so much safer going and having them done in a salon. It's, it's far, far easier to do the process on somebody else than it is to do it to yourself when you've got one eye shut and all that sort of thing. But if you really do want to see that process and how to do it at home, then do let me know. The mascara I'm gonna to use today is one that I haven't picked up for a while because I've had my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk push-up lashes. This is such a good mascara and I just feel like I need some body and volume to my lashes right now. So I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Legit Lashes. I really like this. I know a lot of people had problems with this during the summer humid months because this does transfer to your upper lids. You do have to be quite careful to make sure that you've powdered this area, otherwise it will transfer. But I love the way it looks. 
I really, really like it. So I'm gonna go in with the volume side first. I love the applicator. The wand is just superb. It really coats every single lash. I'm gonna try and get this as far down to the root as possible. Give it a little wiggle and really coat the bottoms of the lashes. So once I've got one coat of the volume right down at the base of the lashes, I'm gonna go into the curl and length and do the tips of the lashes just to lift those up, give them a little bit of length and really coat to the tips. So I've just put a coat of the curl and length on the bottom lashes as well and I am really, really pleased with how those look now. I'm gonna move into bronzer and just put a little bit more dimension back into my face. The brush that I use for my bronzer all the time is the Refa 05 brush. It's quite domed but it also goes to a point as well and I find that really really useful. If you want me to do a video all about my favourite brushes do let me know because a few of you have asked but I've had that in the past where lots of people have asked for a video and then nobody watched it so do let me know if that's a video that you really want to see and, and I will make that for you. There are some amazing brushes around I'm just gonna pop this right up to my hairline and really blend that in my hairline. And I'm really gonna take this all the way down my temples just to make sure that it's just not a line across the forehead. It does blend and connect everywhere else as well. And then I'm gonna use that point to just put a little bit right on the edge and then with a very light hand, just give that a bit of a wiggle and then you get a really nice defined line there that's not overly harsh and then you can blend that up. It's barely noticeable but very effective. And it just sucks that cheek in and gives it a bit more definition. So then I'm gonna take my favorite blush. It just completes everything and brings everything together. This is from Hourglass. It's the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Luminous Flush. And I'm gonna go in with an angled brush and just pad that. on the skin. I'm not swiping, I'm just dotting. And I'm not going too far down, I'm just gonna keep it at the moment about the corner of my iris and up around to my temple and really bring it around the corner. It just adds to that lifted effect. Also gonna take this slightly underneath my eye just to lift that up even more and blend it out. And then I'm just going to, whatever else is on my brush, just right at the top, right underneath the tear trough, is just swipe that on, just to add a little bit of color to that area, but not too much. So I want to go for something quite neutral on the lips today. One of my favorite products is from Charlotte Tilbury. Her Hollywood lip line is just to die for. I have several of this line, but the one I'm gonna to use today is called Dolly Bird. And I really like it. I love the applicator. It's just really helpful because of the curve that it's got on it. It really does allow it to hug the lip, to give it really accurate and precise lines. So if you want to overline your lips, you can do it without using a lip liner. I mean, it's probably easier to do it with a lip liner as well, but this can create that edge. So 
So I could just leave it like that if I wanted more of a matte look. I am going to add a little bit of a gloss topper though. I've forgotten what this is called and it's actually not written on the bottle anywhere, I don't think. I know it's in the shade Pillow Talk, but I can't remember whether it's Pillow Talk Diamonds or Pillow Talk something else. I'll link it in the description box for you anyway. But I just really, really love it. And I just find it gives the lips that fuller appearance. And lastly, if I want this to last all day, I'm going to give this a bit of a spritz of the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray. Such a fine mist. Sorry, pretentious wafting. And that's it. A really super glamorous look with a natural edge. Obviously, my eyes are really quite dramatic and glamorous, but the rest of it is quite toned down and muted. The foundation that I've picked still allows my skin to shine through. It's not super matte, super full coverage, high on 100% glam, but I don't think that that takes anything away from this look. In fact, I think it adds to it. Let me know your thoughts. If you found this video helpful in any way, I would love it if you would give this a like. Also, click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. I'm also on Instagram and one of the favorite things about my job is that I love to see your recreations of the looks that I create for you on YouTube. So if you decide to recreate this at home, please do tag me on your Instagram post so that I can take a sneaky peek for myself. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.